All right, hello everyone and welcome to NDD's webinar titled Advanced Infection Protection for Patients and Medical Staff. My name is Jamie Burgess and I'm an RT with NDD. And my name is Darren Fitzpatrick and I'm also an RT with NDD. Today joining us we have Tom Sinclair from NDD. Tom is a Senior Vice President for North American Sales and thank you John, Tom for joining us today. No, it's good to be here, thank you. <clears throat> Right, a little bit of housekeeping right off the bat. So as always, that question bar is gonna be open in your control panel on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, feel free to type in questions as they come up throughout the presentation. We're gonna take time about halfway through and then again at the end to address those questions as, as they come up. There will also be a post-webinar email. Uh, this will have contact information for Tom, Jamie, and myself for any questions that might come up afterwards. There will also be a recording of the webinar included that you can find on our website. All right, objectives for today. So we are going to talk about reopening concerns for PFT labs and introduce the NDD inline filter solution. We're going to understand how the NDD inline filter solution design allows for lung function testing accuracy and also infection control. We're going to learn the proper use and the proper placement for, these, for this filter solution on all of our products. And then we're going to review additional resources and learn how to place an order. So our next slide goes over why is pulmonary function testing important today? Pulmonary function testing is a critical piece of diagnosis and treatment of lung disease. So on this slide, we're going to go over the established baseline lung function values, know your DLCO, monitor lung function in patients with post-COVID-19, and predict, uh, predict exacerbations that are likely to result in ER visits and hospitalization. The team at NDD has been working on nonstop on a solution that is not only safe for you, but for your patients during this time, but also gives you accurate results you have come to expect from NDD. I'm going to hand it over to Tom so we can dive into our solution a bit more. All right, great. Um, thank you very much, guys. And, and I appreciate everyone that's joining us on the call. Um, so we'll, we'll take a little bit of time. I'll take a little bit of time to go through um, sort of the highlights of the solution. Um, one of the first things that we've tried to do at NDD is provide you with uh, a nice resource page on the NDD website um, that, that targets specifically uh, some of the challenges around COVID-19. Uh, and with that, we're trying to also provide some of the recommendations and guidances that the governing bodies or, or the, the recommended bodies are out there. And so some of that that we've seen be very, very consistent across um, ATS, Quad AI, ERS, the uh, Canadian Thoracic Society have all focused on things like uh, personal protection equipment, uh, cleaning guidelines, um, infection control protocols. We've also seen things like negative pressure rooms so that you can um, help get uh, exhaust air faster. But there's a lot of things that play into uh, appropriately um, you know, engaging back in lung function testing. Um, inline filtration, which we're gonna talk about today is a part of that, but there's a lot of components to it. So please, you can go to the, um, the, med, uh, the NDD webpage and you can you know, look for a lot of these resources on there as well if you have more questions. All right. Um, so I, I am really excited to talk about the NDD inline filter solution. So for those of you that have been with NDD for a long time, um, you know, we've had a cross-contamination protection solution for over 20 years. Our, our device, um, very few moving pieces, very easy to clean, um, and the, the, the spread and the flow tubes that go into our devices uh, have, have some built-in protection to help protect the device. Uh, we've also recognized that as um, you know, the dynamics have changed in the world that we're in, Inline filtration has become more and more important and recommendations in a lot of cases. And so what NDD did um, very quickly was they found a way to adapt our, our spirometers and our pro and pro lab uh, to add inline filtration. You can get a kind of a preview of it on the right hand side. We'll go through it in a lot more detail in this presentation, um, but we've really try to provide that, that double protection from infection, which is including uh, the, the, the um, the cleaning protocols and the consumables that have that have already been there for 20 years, plus the introduction of the inline filter. All right, we know that as we went through this, um, one of the most important things to us at NDD is that we can continue providing accurate and repeatable results. Um, if you look at the right-hand side, it's kind of hard to see in the presentation, but you can go onto our website and expand on this information. Um, we show a comparison of what our results in FEV1 and FVC look like with and without a filter. 
and, and you can tell pretty easily that not only are we within ATS uh, recommendations, but we're also, we're, we're extremely tight. There's virtually no impact to adding a filter the way we've added it onto our devices. Um, so your results can stay consistent and repeatable, even in the presence of trying to trend patients. So you can still trend those patients that you've been testing for the past couple of years. Um, we pass all the standard testing, your waveform, DLCO, and MBW simulated testing. Um, and, and this was done, this didn't happen uh, very easily. We had to make sure we tested over 20 different types of filters. Um, and while there's a lot of good filters out in the market, um, getting very repeatable results was really one of our goals, which also played into the some of the filters that we're going to recommend. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, Jamie, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, you know, before we kind of dive into a more detailed, um, the nitty gritty of actually how the filters go on to all of the devices, we figured this would be an appropriate time to pause. Um, we're talking about the development of these filter, this filter solution and its accuracy and how we kind of got to this place. So we wanted to take just a second, Bianca, um, and take a look and see if there were any questions um, at this point in the presentation. We figured this would be a good place to kind of pause for a minute. Hi, Jamie. Thank you. So I'm opening up the questions bar now. Um, I don't see any open questions. Maybe we give it another few seconds here, um, but I don't see any uh, any questions at the moment. Okay. okay. And there will be plenty of time at the end, I think, to, to right. go through some right. questions too. So um, so we can we can move forward. All right. Sounds good. So uh, we're going to take a closer look, like I said, at how these filter solutions actually work with each of our devices. Uh, we want you guys to be comfortable with the correct placement of these so that you can get those re accurate results that you're used to seeing from NDD. All right, so for for the different solutions, you can see there's three different setups that we are going to recommend um, when it comes to uh, two setups for spirometry and one for the Pro and Pro Lab. All right, so on the right-hand side, you can see the Easy on PC and the Easy One Air. On the left-hand side, you can see some highlights of, of what's needed to, to um, implement the inline filter solution. So on the Easy On PC, you're gonna have an adapter, which is what we're calling it the Filter Adapter SP, and then you're gonna have a filter. And that filter needs to have an inner diameter of 30 millimeters. Um, the filter that we've seen have a lot of very positive results, <clears throat> excuse me, is the AM Systems. It's a, a viral bacterial filter. The item code is on the screen. Um, and it was very, very consistent in our results, in our, in our testing, which was pretty important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen other filters that have inner diameters of 30 millimeters that have been used, and it works pretty well. It is really important on the spirometry that A, everything is still single use. All right, so there's no reusing of the consumables. That's pretty important for infection control. And B, um, that the filter goes on the end of the spirometer. Um, when we put it on the end, it provides virtually no impact to results. Um, we found that when you added a filter on the front end of the spirometer, uh, again, filter filter medium, filter filters themselves can be very variable, so the, the results became variable. Um, so we, we helped, you know, we're trying to control as many controllables as we can, and one of the best things to do is to put the filter on the end of the device. Because we already had a built-in, um, you know, cross-contamination protection on the consumable, on the flow tube, uh, and on the spirette, it allowed us to do this and still maintain the integrity of our device. Right. On the Pro and Pro Lab, it's a little bit different. So because of the nature of that device, we had to do uh, something on the front end. And so what we were able to develop was a Pro and Pro Lab kit that includes um, an adapted spirette and filter adapter combination, um, a filter that is very specific in the recommendation because adding the filter and the uh, adapter to the front of the Pro um, provided a little bit of additional dead space and, linear, and, and flow linearity. And with that, we uh, made a software update that goes with this. So it's a combination package where you can get the kit and the software, and the software is free of charge, like all of our software updates are, um, that will allow you to select that you're using it. And then the, the device will automatically adjust for any changes that, would, that could happen. Right, absolutely. So we are going to dive right in with our first um, with our first device, which is the Easy One Air. Darren is going to kind of grab our pieces here, and we're going to put it together for you guys. So you have your Easy One Air, the flow tube, and then there is the adapter for the flow tube that will go only one way onto the back of the flow tube. Okay, and that and our lovely filter here. 
Yeah. So, so like Jamie yep. said, sorry, Jamie, I'll jump in here. There's oh, you're fine. a way that this fits on perfectly. Now, if you have this fil this adapter upside down, it will not fit. So it needs to be fit just like the flow tube is fit. We did it so we could make sure there's no leaks there. Right, absolutely. And then the filter just easily slides onto the back of that adapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is what the filter setup looks like on the Easy One Air. And now we'll switch over to our other device. And I'll give that to you, Jamie. So now we're going to add the filter to the Easy On PC and the Plus. So Jamie will go ahead and put this together. So again, we have now our Spiret that goes into the PC and the Easy One Plus. So you insert the Spiret just the way you were before. There's the adapter, again, that Tom talked about. Everything goes on the back when it comes to spirometers and easily put on the filter. Good job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> as easy as that. It's pretty simple. Right. It's pretty it simple. It really is. I'm going to hand that pretty, to you. And the, it, again, things like this that make sure that you put it on correctly, that it cannot be upside down. We made sure to make that easy for everybody. All right. So moving on to the pro. Uh, the actual assembly is pretty simple and we'll get to that in just a second. But as Tom said, you know, there's a little bit more that goes into adding an inline filter to the Pro. And that first step is going to be that software update. That software update, the 3.7, it's live on our website. It's something that you could go even after this call and download and be ready to um, be set up to use the filter solution. So that is the first step is to get that software uploaded. The second step is going to be the actual assembly of the Pro, um, of the Pro filter solution and we'll go through that here in just a minute. And then step three, you'll see here in a little bit, once that um, configuration of the software is installed onto your Pro, before every test, it is going to prompt you to either, that you will either be testing with a filter or not. Right. Okay, so again, just like Tom said, just to reiterate, you know, that software update is required if you're going to be using the filter solution for the Pro or the Pro Lab. You know, these front end filters, um, they can change those lung testing measurements and characteristics. The biggest one being that dead space, you know, think of it, you're extending your trachea with that filter, um, it adds volume, and then also the flow characteristics coming through that filter on the front side. So that dead space has a clinically in, um, significant influence, especially on DLCO and the multiple breath washout measurements and the software update is needed to account for that difference so that we can keep your measurements consistent and accurate and again just to reiterate those are DLCO barriers and our MBW filters that we've had um, for the life of this device those still are going to remain single patient use even with the addition of a frontline filter Okay, so again, we're at that step one once you have that software update downloaded onto your pro or pro lab you're going to go into your utility settings and then you're going to go into the device settings and you can actually see once that update is done that there will be a new tab that says inline filter there's a drop down that will have the AM systems filter which is the filter we're recommending and that is coming in our pro pro lab kits once you have that selected you can save the settings in the future if we have other filters that are testing well um, and we're confident in those results at some point if we need to we can and um, import new files with different filters. But at this time, that A&M system filter that's coming with your Pro Pro Lab kits is what is already built in here. Jamie, the only thing I want to say on that real quick is, yeah. is the AM systems is what we're using in, in the U.S. predominantly. Um, there is another filter that was manufa that's manufactured by Intersurgical that it's not available in the U.S., to, but it is available in Canada and internationally right. that um, our global counterparts are, are recommending because it's been pretty easy for them to access and it's been pretty successful in mm -hmm. testing. So um, in case there's any um, international um, customers or, or anybody that's doing clinical research internationally, um, right. There is another option. It's not just that one from AM system. You'll, you'll hear a little bit about our intersurgical option as well. It's just not available in the US. Right. Right, thank you, for, thank you for cutting in with that. That's a good point. So now we are going to actually assemble this for you guys. So you can see that Darren has the um, Pro Pro Lab handle. She mm -hmm. has, in this filter kit, it has a special type of spirette that we're calling the Spirette FA. And you can see it's, it looks a little bit differently than your normal spirette. You're going to insert that just like you would, arrow to arrow. Get everything connected there. You're gonna take your adapter and then put it on the end of the spirette FA. Mm -hmm. 
And then the filters that come with this actually have a fluted mouthpiece. And so then that just goes on the end. And then once, um, once you have all of that assembled, you are just almost ready to test. So the last step, as I mentioned, Darren's gonna explain a little bit more is when you are now going to select that you have chosen to use a filter on your on your pro or pro lab. So what you can see in the picture down in the right hand corner, you're going to select the filter. If uh, if the use of the inline filter is enabled, the user will still have the choice before starting each test to specify that the filter is in use. So it's actually going to ask you twice. You're going to set it, and then it's going to ask you, are you using a filter? And that's when you would select from down on the bottom in the right-hand corner. Right. Um, the next one is how to order adapters. Tom, I'll let you go ahead and go over that. Yeah, so, yeah, so it, we, we, this has been going pretty fast. Obviously, we're trying to respond to customer demand and everybody getting um, up and running as we've seen more people re-engaging on doing lung function testing, sort of regardless of, of the area of care. Um, and so we're trying to make ordering pretty easy. And so the adapters can all be ordered direct from NDD. Our phone number and customer service email address are right there. So you can just, or you can go onto our website and submit a form and request it and we'll contact you to get an order placed. At that point, you, we'll, we'll give you pricing and availability while we do that. Um, filters, you can order those through any of your distribution channels that you would typically use. Um, we do have some filters in inventory. Some customers have asked us to bring it in so that they can get up and running pretty quickly and then work with their, their distributor of choice um, to, to work on their longer term um, availability and, and, and ordering capabilities. Um, but we can help with that in the short term if needed. Uh, for the Pro and ProLab kits, those are, you need to order those direct through NDD. Um, there are obviously a lot more specifications behind that than, than the filters and the adapters. And so for right now, you can call the same phone number and customer service number and order those direct from NDD. And now we'll go over a little bit more information on the COVID-19 infection control resource. If you guys have been on our website, you see that we have have put out a uh, have put out our COVID resource page, and this is just a, it's on our website. It's easy to find. Um, you can see the website above, and there's also further infection control guidelines that we've added from Quad AI, that we've added from ATS, from ALA, uh, COPD Foundation, ERS. There's a lot of resources on there to help you uh, get your lab up and running and feeling the most comfortable about it with as much support as we could possibly give you. So. Right. It is a really good resource. We really tried um, not only to bring the information about our filter solution and what we can do to help you get back mm -hmm. up and running, but just giving you a resource, a, a list of resources that you can really set down and explore with your infection mm -hmm. control team to make the best decisions for your situation. All right. So I know that it kind of seems like we've moved through this pretty quickly, but we know that there's going to be some questions on the back end. And we want to make sure that we take time to address um, any of those questions and concerns that you guys have appropriately. So key takeaways just from this part of the presentation, you know, we want you all to have a better understanding of the NDD inline filter solution mm -hmm. um, and how that ensures that dependable double protection from infection, how this is just an above and beyond step during this time. Um, understand the correct filter placement on all of our different products. And then also knowing how to order these for your facility and how to locate those extra resources. All right, Bianca, yeah. if you want to jump back questions. on. Yeah, we will take Hi. some questions. Of course, yeah, the, the questions are coming in. So yes, um, I'll are. just dive right in. Um, so the first question here from Rebecca is, do you recommend using nose clips with the Easy On PC? Yes. yes. <laughs> We're big <laughs> proponents for you to put a nose clip on. It would not only make your results um, easier to obtain, but it'll make it less stressful on the patient. <laughs> Right. I am one of those for sure that when I do trainings, I will get mm -hmm. to talking and forget to put my nose clips back on between trials. And my results are significant enough yep. that I end up then having to do extra trials. So, yes, we're big proponents for nose Fun. clips every yes. single time. Perfect. Thank you. Um, another question here is what happens if the patient blows through the back filter? Um. Yeah, I, I meaning if the filter if the like filter if it, was to fall off or or, or just the, the, the what comes through it. Yeah, Jose, if you want to um, elaborate a little bit more, we can get that question answered for you. Um, I just had his notes here on on what happens if the patient blows through the back filter. So we'll we'll move on to the next. And if Jose, if you want to send some more details through, yeah. I can mm -hmm. I can ask. 
Um, the next question is, do you recommend performing the multi-flow syringe calibration with the adapter and filter to ensure accuracy? Tom, do you want to? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, so so you can. You can perform it with the filter. So the when you're using a, a filter on it, um, we're not impacting the expiratory results. And so part of it depends on what you're looking for um, in, in doing the cal checks. Um, because the, if, if we're cal checking with the filter on, um, from time to time what we have seen, and this is the variability in the filters, is the inspiratory can vary a little bit. And so when you're doing a full cal check, sometimes that inspiratory varies enough where it may not pass the cal check. The expiratory passes fine, the inspiratory can vary a little bit. And so um, we've had that conversation. We're trying to fine tune our solution so that it doesn't impact the inspiratory as much. Um, it's, it's been a challenge as we've found a bunch of different filters in the market. Um, but with that being said, um, you can do it with the filter on it. You can also do it with the filter off. If you're not passing Calchex, you can call us and we can walk through that a little bit with you and give you a little okay. more detail on how to work through that. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Um, the next question just is about filter um, availability and cost. So if these filters are readily available to purchase. So filters are readily available. Um, I, I can't lie, demand's pretty high. And, and, and that's every filter manufacturer out there. It's um, demand is pretty high because they're being used for a number of different things. Um, and in industries that filters have really never been used in before. And so um, we do have some inventory. I know our, our distribution partners have done a pretty good job of acquiring inventory for um, the AM systems filter as well as others that are out there. Um, pricing is gonna vary a little bit. So that's why you can call NDD and we can get pricing and everything, pricing and availability to you um, or you can call your distribution channel um, that you may work with and, and they can get that for you as well. So um, availability is something that we continue to try to work on as we hear more customers that are starting back up. We're trying to ramp up our inventory as well as kind of warning our distribution partners because uh, it is a bit of a new environment for them with this. Um, but, but as of right now, they should be pretty available. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have another question here just in terms of accuracy of expiratory measurements using the A&M system filter. So some people think that they can often get it cheaper elsewhere and it may not give accurate results. So just maybe providing a little bit more emphasis on the accuracy of the expiratory measurement using the A&M's filter. Yeah, so the, the data that's on our website will show at a pretty high level of detail how accurate we are when we're performing our, 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 our calibration testing or our waveform testing. Um, you can find other filters that will fit and, and in a lot of cases they should work okay because the expiratory result is not changed all that much based on the resistance on the filter when it's when it's after the measurement which which in our situation it is um, that being said i think i said earlier we've, we tested 20 if not more types of filters as we were looking to provide selections because we're not we're not trying to limit to one or the other this is really more trying to get people up and running as quickly as they can um, you can the am systems filter is the one that we saw to be the most repeatable and, and the one that has been um, consistently accurate for us. Um, so there are cheaper ones out there, but we have seen variations in testing results with them. It doesn't mean they're bad filters, it just means with the combination of our device that we're working through, um, it may not work as well. Right, okay. All right, perfect, a few others here. So for the um, the spirette, is the special spirette only needed to, to be used when doing DLCO and MBW and not for spirometry. Correct. So it's used only when you're using the Easy One Pro and the Pro Lab, the Spiret FA. Right, but you so, would use it for the spirometry portion yes. with the, so any test that can be performed on the Pro Pro Lab, that would be the, the full solution right. that you would use. You won't you need you to switch it back and switch forth. back and forth. Right. Perfect. Another question here with the updated software, does it affect testing when we go back to pre-COVID testing without filters? No, um, you know, like I said, once that in the, once that software update is enabled and you've chosen to save um, the inline filter solution um, in your utilities, that pop-up will occur before every single test asking if you're testing with or without a filter. If at some point the filter solution is no longer part of your infection control plan, you can simply go in um, to your utilities menu and select not and turn it off. 
So again, you have the option before every test, if your situation changes um, from patient to patient, if you have a higher risk patient, wanna use a filter, low risk patient, you don't, whatever your decision is with your infection control team, that option is gonna be there. When the option, when you no longer want the option, right. you can go in and turn it off. And, and it's also why we are providing a very specific recommendation for the filter type so okay. that we can, we can, you know, we can adjust for the controllables um, in our, in our software. Um, we want to expand that, that option. We want to expand the availability of filters as we continue to test, but, but it's why we're, we're being so specific and so uh, prescriptive on, on what to use for the pro uh -huh. profile. Perfect. So we've gotten a couple questions here on just the filters and if they're single use only or if there are multi-use filter examples. No, everything's single use. Single use. Um, that, that's that's going to be your best protection. I mean, filters in general mm -hmm. should be single use, um, but but overall that's what's going to give you your best protection um, and, and, and accurate results. Okay. Um, let's see here. When not performing DLCO, you can use a regular spirette, but where does the filter go? Is it an add-on mouthpiece needed? Okay. So if if Darren was to take the the, the pro, it, you could use the, the the pro flow sensor just like you would an easy on PC. So you could put a regular spread in and put the adapter at the end of it, just like we would with a typical spirometer. And in that case, when you would do the test, <laughs> sorry. I'll do that. Go ahead. Keep going. Well, I was going to say, in the situation where you're doing that, you could do it this way, uh, but you would actually say that you're not using a filter. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but because we're measuring after the result and you're not going to be doing a DLCO test if you're just doing spirometry, you would actually say that you're, you're not using a filter because of that, just like with the, with the Easy on PC, we're not, we're not doing any software adjustments on the Easy on PC. Right. Um, because you, we don't need to adjust for anything. You would do the same thing on the pro if you were only going to do spirometry. Right. If you were going to do a, if you were going to do spirometry and then graduate to DLCO, then you would go back to the original solution for the pro, and it's all in one, so you don't have to go back and forth. All right, perfect. Um, I think just going back to that initial question, we did get a little bit more um, data from Jose, and he was just asking if the patient accidentally blew through the wrong end. Um, oh, if we have any information there. Um, if they were to blow, I mean, if they were to blow through the wrong end, I would probably just get a new filter. I mean, I, I'm trying to imagine if I were to go through and let's say they blew this way. Yeah. I don't know. Tom, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the only potential challenge is if they, if, the if there was any, if those particulate aerosols, I was like saying they get it wet. <laughs> they, if they got the filter material wet, they may want to just change it to to help yeah. with 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 accuracy of testing more than anything, because we're not really right. worried about cross contamination at that point, because it's the same patient. Um, exactly. So that would be my well, actually, I, I take that back, because if they've blown into the end of it and they then go ahead and exhale on the other side, for for room air protection, you would probably want to replace the filter. Right. right. So good question. They're all good questions, but that was the one we haven't thought about. That was a good question. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and we we have gotten a few questions on emails uh, post webinar, so there will be a post webinar email sent with the l recorded version of this presentation. So everybody on this call will receive a copy as well as those who weren't able to join will also receive an email with contact information as well as the PowerPoint and recording today. Absolutely. And if there are any questions, like I said, we're here. So yep. here, respond quickly with you guys. And if it's something that we can do virtually and help set you up when you get your filters, we can absolutely jump online and help you do that as well. Any other ones? Okay, let's to... see. Um, I think I have one, one more minute. question here. Um, right, so I do have a, a customer on the line who um, does have a pro lab and they do have the new filter set up and they did not make the software adjustment. Is there any way that they can go back and make changes to that testing session? So, well, I, I mean, let's get the contact information for that. Yeah. Um, I, we'll, we'll find, I, my initial reaction is I don't think so, but let's 
let us dig into that for you and follow yeah, up right. after the webinar with you. Yep, perfect. Yeah, I have his information, so we'll go ahead, Michael, and, and send you an email after this webinar. Okay, great. All Good right. deal. Perfect. Well, if that is everything, thank you, Bianca. Thank you so much, Tom, for hopping on with us for this discussion. And thank you to everyone who was able to join. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you again next month. Keep an eye out for the post webinar email. You have all of our contact information. Feel free to reach out with any questions that might pop up. And thank you guys and have a wonderful day. Yes, have a great day.